No trip to St. Petersburg would be complete without a visit to Catherine Palace, which is in the suburb of Pushkin, about 25 kilometers from St. Petersburg. For some background, Pushkin is a quaint medieval town, a kind of place where you'll find more castles than houses. So if you're looking for an old town vibes, this might be a place of your pick. I personally recommend getting on 299 and 545 because they'll be using the main road and that's the fastest route. If you're not sure about the bus, just check the bus for the sign saying Sarkoye Zelo, supposedly that's how it's pronounced, or just ask the bus driver. Because even with a travel guide, we didn't know what the bus stop looked like. Luckily, the locals on the bus were very quick to notice the tourists and call out for us that, hey, this is our stop. Because who else would be visiting a palace? on a weekday nonetheless. The Kalarine Palace, being a summer residence by Russian emperors perhaps, is the busiest in summer. To Grammar House we go! Oh, we can. Probably because the palace looks more alive and colorful at the time of the year. So when you visit the palace in winter, you compete with no one for the entry. The only regret I've made on my visit to this day is not wearing a fancy as Bridgerton gown and running down the corridor refusing to marry some prince of Prussia. How did I ever miss that opportunity? The Great Hall or the Light Gallery was intended for more important receptions, such as the balls, formal dinners, and masquerades. Do you remember that animated film, Anastasia, where the Calavine Palace is represented as the home of the imperial family? Well, that's not true. This exquisite palace was used as a summer residence by the Russian emperors. That was rather disappointing, and I was hoping to see Princess Anastasia as well. The highlight and currently the most visited part of the palace have to be the Amber Room. The place is decorated using amber mosaic panels which was a gift to Peter the Great from Frederick Wilhelm of Prussia. It was almost destroyed during the intense battle of World War II, but thanks to the quick thinking, the mosaics were taken down for safety. On that account, we were given a chance to witness this remarkable piece of work. The Catherine Palace first started small with a very lovely behind story of Peter the Great wanting to build a summer residence for his wife Catherine. Aww, if that ain't the cutest thing. When it was completed, the building was a two-story palace. Years later, Empress Elizabeth expanded the palace further. Eventually, 100 kilograms of gold was used to decorate the exterior of the palace. And now we know all that glittering are not from my camera's fielder. Anyways, that amount of gold sounds like a lot of money for a place that has been demolished and reconstructed over six times, right? But to be fair, Empress Catherine thought that it was a waste on state funds on a private project. So she spent her own money on the construction of a palace. And that people is what we called a responsible monarch. Applaud. To be honest, this has got to be one of my favorite places in St. Petersburg. And I feel like Russia is one of the countries that truly appreciates the work of art. You can see it through their Baroque style, the tiniest details in each room, and a very good use of color schemes that just complement each other so well. 
Each country has its own beauty, and one of the aspects used to identify a country's identity is artistry.